but his in-ring stuff was phenomenal. And I'm wondering if it was something like that or if just something in WWE that somebody had a bug up their ass for Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. We're gonna <laughs> mentioned Dolph Ziggler. Now, uh, a lot of people yeah. got fired a few days ago. I can give you the full list. Uh, a lot of them are NXT, but I'll just run through them quickly. Mustafa Ali, Rick Boogs, Elias, Elias uh, Riddick Moss, Top Dollar, Shelton Benjamin, Emma, mm, yeah. uh, the big name. I won't go through the rest of them, but the big name's Dolph Ziggler. You said you were a big booster of Dolph for years, so why? Yeah. Well, you know, when I watched him, I saw a lot of the earmarks that Shawn Michaels had. You know, and we're, we'll get into that in another episode, but... uh you know, my differences with Sean aside, he was an amazing in-ring performer. And, you know, when you see a young kid come up like that and understanding that, like I, which I would learn later that Dolph had this extensive amateur background. Um, uh, again, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not privy to their dressing room and the things that go on. Uh, but it always seemed to me from afar, looking in the few times that I would peek into the company, that I would see him and he'd be getting a little bit of a push. And then all of a sudden he would disappear for two or three months and then he'd be back on. And I remember the one time he was in a uh, handicap match against, uh, uh, I'm so bad with names anymore. The, uh, oh, what's his name? The great big guy. Um, big muscle guy. He's on, he's, uh, he left WWE a couple years ago. Uh, big e. uh, no, 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 no. Uh, he's bald now. Uh, gigantic. He's just a massive, massive guy. Uh, I've never met him, and his name's right at the tip of my tongue, but he was in a handicap match with somebody else against this guy. And uh, I, I can't remember if this was after one of those world title runs or not long before. And he's getting, so he's been, he was getting this semi push, gone for a while, and I was in a handicap match. And, and to me, like, that was like the, the entirety of his career this herky jerky, we'll see you for a little bit, we won't see you. And to me, a, a guy with that kind of extensive amateur background, uh, those earmarks that he had that were very reminiscent of Shawn Michaels at, at a younger age. Um, and and the fact that he was so telegenic, right? He felt comfortable. You could see it on camera that it just never, it boggled my mind as to why this guy wasn't getting like Steve Austin to say, if Vince wants you over, he'll strap a rocket to your ass. And I don't recall ever seeing that with Dolph. Uh, but I, I think that's going to be a boon to AEW. And I'm curious to see what Dolph does now, because again, not being in that dress room, you know, Moose and I were talking last night, you know, I always see like on his description, like he's a comedian, a wrestler, this, that, the other thing. So there are the guys like Brad Armstrong who were amazing in the ring, but getting in front of the camera, they just from where they came up in the business, you know, Brad would get out there and wanted to I'm gonna give a hundred percent. I mean, but you know, that, that, that just really boring blah, baby face stuff. But the funny part about that was in the dressing room, Brad Armstrong was amazingly funny, talented. He'd beatbox, he'd moonwalk, telling jokes. Uh, he was so, so alive in the dressing room. Getting that. Uh, but his in-ring stuff was phenomenal. And I'm wondering if it was something like that or if just something in WWE that somebody had a bug up their ass for Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, We're going to see now. That is exactly possibly right because it's always been reported that Vince McMahon Never liked Dolph Ziggler. So if the director of the movie doesn't see box office in you, then you'll never amount to what you could be. Yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, it's always seemed that way to me. And you don't want to go to that because it just suddenly sounds like, oh, you're just going like for the low-hanging fruit. But the, the, the obvious question I would have, and I think every fan watching right now would have, is, okay, if Vince didn't like him, why is he there? You know, if, if, I, if I draft... Uh, Dan Marino will say, uh, to, you know, Dan Marino was an amazing arm. Couldn't scramble. I had bad knees from the time he was in college. So if I'm going to run an offense that requires my quarterback to scramble around just because Dan Marino is available, doesn't mean I should snatch him up unless I want to change my offensive scheme. So like, again, like if that's, if, if that's the case, Vince or somebody else in the company just never saw money in him, then why was he there? Um, it's yeah, it's a strangety. Well, it, again, like one of those things to keep eyes on. I always, I hope the fans watching understand. Please send stuff into James and because you always bring this stuff up to me uh, when the fans send it in. You know, help help fill in those cobwebs. You know, uh, clear those cobwebs out of my head a little bit. 